Hey there, welcome to this class. So let us begin installing MySQL on our Windows machine. So I'm going to head over to my browser and I'm going to head over to google.com. And here I'm going to search for MySQL. And you will see this first website appear over here, which is mysql.com. So this is the official website for this particular software. So I'm going to click on this particular website and you will be taken to this website over here. So this is a logo that you should see. So you can go through the official website and the details over here. You can read more about who are the customers that are using MySQL and so on. But since we are here to download, I'm going to click on downloads over here. And if you scroll down here, you will see different download options over here. So I'm going to say MySQL Community GPL Downloads and I'm going to select this. Now once you select this, you will be again presented with multiple options over here. So I'll just select MySQL Installer for Windows. So I'll click on this and you should see this page over here which talks about the installer version. It talks about the version here like the drop down and the operating system. So I'll just keep these selections over here. Now, if you scroll down over here, you will see these two options. So this is Windows x86 32-bit, and this is also a similar one. But the difference is over here. So this says MySQL Web Community, and this says MySQL Installer Community. Now, what is the difference over here? So Web Community version is the online installer and you need to download to connect to the online server over here with this version but this is an offline installer okay so i'll go ahead and i'll download this version over here now when you click on download you will be shown this particular page over here which is asking you to log in or sign up for a free account so i don't want to do that so i'm just going to say no thanks just start my download you can alternatively create an account or sign up over here. Now I just said no thanks, just start my download and I have downloaded the installer over here. It is saved on my desktop. Now to begin the installation, I'm going to double click on this. So this is going to show you such window over here and it is going to say please wait. And you might see this pop up over here, which is asking you if you want to want this app to make changes onto your device. So I trust this app, so I'll say yes. And this is going to ask again, so I, I'll say yes over here. So here now you are going to be presented with the choose a setup type screen wherein you are being asked to choose the setup type. So you can either install the server only. So this is just going to install the MySQL server or you can have the client only. So you can have the client only version wherein you can install these three components like MySQL shell, router and the workbench. So shell is nothing but the interactive command line interface using which you can query the database. You can have a router like this is like a router daemon for your database or you can have MySQL workbench. So this is like a graphical user interface using which you can connect to the database. So with this setup, you install these three components. And with full, you install quite a few components like MySQL Server, MySQL Shell, MySQL Router, Workbench, and so on. Okay, but what we are going to do is we are going to say custom and we are going to go next. And now here we will be asked to choose the products over here. So I'm going to click on MySQL Server here. Okay, and I'm going to get the MySQL server. I'm going to install MySQL workbench over here. So let me expand this a bit. And I'll install MySQL shell over here. So MySQL server is nothing but the SQL database that we are installing. So this is the MySQL database server that will be installed on our system. MySQL shell is nothing but the command line interface using which you can connect to the database 
and write SQL queries right from within the command line. Okay. And my SQL workbench is the graphical user interface using which you can come connect to the database. So I'll say next over here, you'll see these three components. Okay. They are ready to install. Okay. If you just don't want these three components and if you want everything to be installed, you can just choose full option on the choose setup type screen. So that is also perfectly fine. Okay. But I have chosen only these three components because this is what we are going to need. And I'll say execute. Now, the moment you say execute, you will see the progress happening over here. Okay. And you will see the status like complete. It's, it's saying installing and this is ready to install. So we will wait for a while until this process completes. So the installation for these three components have been successful and complete as you can see over here. Now we'll click next and you will see that we now need to do the product configuration and you can see over here, my SQL server is ready to configure. So I'll say next over here and you will see this configuration screen appear over here. So here we are going to select the config type as development computer. You can click on this and see the different options that you have over here along with their descriptions. But we will have the development computer selected over here. TCP IP is the protocol that we will have checked. So this is by default checked and we have the default port number as well on which our server will be running. So we'll keep this as it is and we'll say next. Now on the next screen, you are going to be asked to select the authentication method over here. So we'll just select the first option over here and I'll say next. Now here you will be asked to mention the MySQL root password. Okay. Now root is like an admin account that you have in the database. So you need to choose a strong password over here. So I'll enter the password of my choice. So I'll say so you can enter the passwords of your choice and just make sure that they match with each other and they are strong. Okay. So you will see this password strength indicator appear over here. Okay. So my passwords are strong and they match with each other. Then I'll say next over here. Now on the next screen, it will ask you to configure the windows service to start the server. So I'll keep the default setup over here. And what this means is that MySQL server is being configured on my system as a service and a service name is MySQL 80 and it will start the MySQL server at system startup. So if you are unchecking this, just make sure you go to services and start the service manually. Okay. And I'll say standard system account over here. So I'm just keeping the default selected over here and I'll say next. Now over here, it is asking for some permission files over here. So I'll say next and it will ask me to apply the configuration on the next steps. So if you are okay with everything, you can say execute over here. And once you say execute, it will start executing these steps. So these are the steps that you are seeing on the screen. So it will start writing the configuration file, update the windows, firewall rules and so on. Okay. It will initialize the database start the server and so on. Okay. Now, if for any reason on this particular screen, you said start the MySQL server at the system startup. And if you unchecked this, so if you uncheck this, you need to start the service manually. And for that, you need to go to start and you need to search for services. And here in the windows services, you need to search for SQL, like MySQL over here. So right now it's not coming over here because I have not yet installed the service, but once you install it, it will appear over here. Okay. And you need to right click and say start. Okay. So I'll just close this. I'll go next, next, and I'll say execute over here. So this will take some time depending on your system performance. So we'll wait for a while and the configuration operation has been completed. So you can see everything is ticked in green and it's all done. Okay. Now I can say finish over here and you can see 
the product configuration we will now walk through a configuration wizard for each of the following products so i'll say next again over here okay so on this particular screen it's telling you installation complete okay and it's showing you two options here which are by default checked okay so i'll say finish over here and you will see this shell prompt open over here and also this application opens up which is mysql workbench so this thing over here this command line is the shell prompt using which you can write sql queries and this is something that we have installed so you can see the path over here is c program files mysql mysql shell 8.0 bin and mysql sh so this is a path where this particular file resides okay so i'll just say quit over here like close it and you can see this particular interface that opens up and it, this is mysql workbench so we have installed mysql database onto our system along with mysql workbench so mysql database is a database server and to connect to the database server so it does not have a interface so we need a separate software which is also provided by mysql and it is known as mysql workbench so we will be making use of this particular software and you can read the description here okay so we'll be making use of this software to connect and work with our database now mysql is installed on our system as a service and to confirm that you can go to services in start you can search for services you can go to m over here the letter m and here you will see mysql et and this is running and this is automatic so startup type over here is automatic so during installation if you have specified that you don't want mysql to start automatically on system start you will have to come over here and right click and say start over here so right now it's started for me so i don't have the start option but you will have to come over here and do the start so i'll close this okay and this is mysql workbench so i'll go full screen with this okay and you will have this software installed so you can search for mysql so you will see mysql workbench mysql shell okay so there are different mysql related tools that we have installed so we will be making use of mysql workbench going forward to connect work with the database and also to write the sql queries okay so now you can see over here you have an option here which says my sql connections is showing you like all the connections that exist onto this particular software so here you are seeing one default connection okay which already exist you can click on this and it will ask you for the password and you can see over here it is connecting to the service which is localhost colon 3306 which is where we have installed the database it says user is root and password it is asking to enter the password over here okay so if you close this and if you right click on this and say edit connection you can see all the information about this connection over here so the connection name is local instance mysql 80 which is what you see over here and the connection method host name port username and the password that you are entering over here okay so i'll say close over here you can even add new connections by clicking on this plus icon over here and it will open like set up new connection wizard all right so this is about connections so i'll just click on this default one and i'll log in using the root user so here we need to enter the password that you had set when installing the mysql database so i'll enter the password so the password is entered and i'll say okay so the moment you say okay you are going to be connected to the system over here okay and you can see over here like this is the screen that you get after logging in so with this we have successfully configured mysql server mysql workbench and mysql shell onto our system and we are ready to write database queries all right So that's about the installation process and I shall see you all soon thank you